What's good, YouTube? It's Gabriel, just another fan TV. Back at you another video. Like the content in this video, go ahead and smash that like button. Like the content of this channel, go ahead and hit that subscribe button, man. We back with the Ravens training camp updates. It's been a couple days. We've had games in between, some practices. I was open to the media, so we couldn't get no reports. But we back with a uh, training camp update for today. And uh, so we're just going to go through a couple things uh, that Ravens related, obviously. So let's get it started, okay? Uh, new signings and who was released to make room for the new signing. Uh, so Ravens signed outside linebacker Trent Harris, uh, University of Miami product. he been in the NFL for three years now. He played for the Dolphins for one year, and then he played for the Giants for the last two seasons. Okay. Now, we knew the Ravens had to do something at outside linebacker and wide receiver. They made their move at outside linebacker. They had to make another move. My guess would have to be a, a receiver. But outside linebacker was thin. Talked about it in a video from earlier this morning. So it's no surprise to see that they added a guy just to be in camp. And who knows, maybe he plays well enough. He might even, you know, could play himself into an opening day spot just because, you know, Bowser and Ojabo guys are not going to be there. You know what I mean? So now who was released? Uh, Denzel Williams, cornerback. Now this one, I'm not going to lie, I'm not a big fan of releasing Denzel Williams. Because he's a guy who's actually made plays during camps, during this camp. He's made interceptions during camp. At the stadium practice, I, I saw him catch an interception. Um, he's been showing up, making plays. But then you keep guys like Robert Jackson and Kavon Seymour. I just don't like it. Um, I would have rather had that Denzel Williams guy who's actually put good stuff out there on the field so far. They've also released Devin Williams. I talked about Devin Williams earlier today as well. He was um, one of the players, I said, whose stock was going down. And apparently his stock has fell in far enough to where the Ravens felt comfortable enough to release him. Um, he's still a big, physical, talented receiver. He just didn't put it all together for the Ravens at this point in time. And there were guys, there were multiple guys ahead of him playing better. So uh, it was it was almost really an easy decision, this one. I mean, I'm not too surprised about them releasing Devin Williams. Okay. Um, now, injury report. J.K. Dobbins, out. Uh, Justin Matabike, out. Uh, Proche, out. Wallace, Boyle, all out, okay? Now, J.K. Dobbins, this sounds precautionary. They want to keep track of his progress, so it sounds like that he might come back to practice on Monday. That's what Harbaugh said in, in uh, the post-practice uh, post presser. So, hopefully, we'll see J.K. Dobbins back on the field on Monday, and they're just taking it slow with him, evaluating his body, seeing how he's doing, with the uh, individual drills and stuff like that, see what that's doing to his knee and see if he's handling it well. All right. Uh, Justin Matabike apparently had a migraine. So the migraine must have been pretty bad if it you know, was able to keep him out of practice. So, you know, hopefully he's recovered from that and able to practice in, you know, in the near future. Uh, you know, you know, Prochet has the soft tissue while he's had the knee injury and Boyle could be a vet day. All right. Now, guys that came back. Uh, Brandon Stevens is back. He's been out for like a week and a half with the soft tissue injury, so it's good to see him back. Jalen Armour Davis is back. That's good for the Ravens' depth, that corner. And Slade Bolden is back. All right? So, you know, that, that competition for uh, wide receiver, he's firmly in that mix. He's made some plays. It was unfortunately he had to miss the preseason game because that would have been a good chance for him to show and prove something. But there's still two more games left. He stays healthy. He's definitely going to play in those games. So we'll see what Slade Bolden has. All right, now, let's get into the offense today, man. Um, first, I want to say that Lamar Jackson had a solid day, 19 for 31, throwing the ball well all over the field. But the main star of the show today was wide receiver one, Rashad Bateman. Apparently, Rashad Bateman was dominant today, catching multiple passes 20, 30 yards down the field, uh, killing the one-on-one -on -one drills, doing whatever he wanted out there. It was one of his better days of the camp. So it was good to see that Rashad Bateman is starting to ramp up as we get closer to the season. Because obviously we're going to need him. And we're going, we're going to lean on Rashad Bateman. So that's the kind of stuff you want to hear. Um, what else? What happened on offense? They said Lamar Jackson threw a dime to Rashad Bateman down the field. Uh, in between uh, Pepe and Tony Jefferson, Bateman came down with the ball. There was another pass uh, over the shoulder ball down the sideline um, over David Vereen that Bateman came down with. So Bateman was all over the field making plays, man. That's what you want from the guy who's going to be number one on the call sheet when it comes to that wide receiver position. Baker's name is at the top of the list. So um, he's showing the Ravens that he can handle the workload right now. The main thing is getting him, staying healthy and getting to week one 
ready to go. All right. Um, so now defense. Let's, let's switch over to defense real quick. They said Adopi Owe was still really hard to block today. It's not like the offense had a better day, but Odafi Owe is still pretty much hard for the Ravens to block. And he should be hard for any NFL team to block. But he has a, miss, a mix of strength and power that not too many guys have. Then you throw in his speed element to it. He's special. Special. So a guy his size that can run a 4-3 and be powerful, it's tough to guard, tough to block. So I'm glad Odafi Owe is consistently... Uh, being wreaking havoc on the offensive line. All right, like I said, I always say, don't take this as the offensive line is bad. Take this as a Dafiowe is growing into a good player. Okay. Now next, Marlon Humphrey. Uh, Marlon Humphrey apparently was breaking up multiple passes and just kind of showing that 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 shutdown corner kind of ability today. And now Marlon, we haven't heard too much from him as far as training camp goes, which is fine. You know, I, I don't really need to hit too much from all. I know what he's going to do in the field. Some people make a big deal about Bateman beating him in one-on-ones. But Bateman's going to beat most corners in one-on-ones. And one-on-one is a drill that's designed for, say, all the time, designed for the wide receiver. So, uh, I'm not too worried about that. I've seen Bateman. I mean, I've seen Humphrey lock up Bateman before. I've seen Bateman get over get over on Humphrey. It's, it's competition going back and forth. It is what it is. But today, Marlon Humphrey had a good day. Uh, not just guarding Rashad Bateman, but it's a good day overall. All right, now let's get to the one-on-one -on -one drills because that was one of the highlights of the practice. Um, so now Rashad Bateman beat Kyle Fuller apparently multiple times in one-on-one -on -one drill, and apparently he beat him fairly easily. Now um, Kyle Fuller, it's all right, it is what it is, but I'm more going to focus on the Rashad Bateman aspect of it. Rashad Bateman is whoever's lined up in front of him, he's beaten, and that's what you want your number one wide receiver to do. If if the defense feels confident they can put one guy on you, be offended by that and beat the, beat the guy in front of you. And he does that. He does that pretty consistently, okay? Um, now, listen, Kyle Fuller, his man-to-man -man skills have been tested in this camp, and he, ha he hasn't shown well in man-to-man -man coverage. He just hasn't, got to be honest with it. But say all the time, when Kyle Fuller's at his best, he's playing zone. So hopefully that's what the Ravens will do with him, put him in a lot of zone. All right, let him read and react with the quarterback's eyes. All right, now my, my favorite one-on-one uh, -on -one battle happened again today. Isaiah Likely versus Kyle Hamilton. They matched up twice. Isaiah Likely won once. Kyle Hamilton won one time. So now you see that while we're going back and forth, these guys are getting each other better. Now, apparently the the first one-on-one uh, -on -one they went to, Kyle Hamilton won that one. They tried to do a little quick hitter. Kyle Hamilton got in there with the pass breakup. The second one, they said he turned his head around too early. Isaiah Leckie was able to get down the field on him. But iron sharp as iron. Uh, I like the fact that Kyle Hamilton is winning some. It's hard for the DB, especially a safety, to go on one-on-one drills and win. And we see what Isaiah Leckie did in the Titans game. So we know he's hard to guard. So I, I love it. All right. Now, apparently, Kyle Hamilton then followed it up going against Mark Andrews. And it wasn't so close. Mark Andrews. Apparently, got over on uh, Kyle Hamilton pretty easily. Um, but that's to be expected. He's the best tight end in the league. I don't. There's not a single person on the Ravens that I would expect to be able to guard Mark Andrews. I'm just going to be completely honest. There's not too many safeties, third corners in the NFL that I expect to be able to guard Mark Andrews. So, if Kyle Hamilton not being able to do it, it's what it is. It's only one play. And Mark Andrews is showing that he's still that elite tight end one that we know he was last year. And now I'm, ex I'm excited for Mark Andrews this year, right? Because we haven't seen elite Mark Andrews when it comes to playoff time. I know that's far ahead, but I'm just saying, I think when we get down there, we're going to see elite Mark Andrews for really the first time we've seen it in the playoffs. So that's what I'm really excited for, okay? Now, who else? Uh, Isaiah Likely went against Marlon Humphrey, right? Now, they said that Isaiah Likely initially made the catch, but then Marlon Humphrey came through and punched it out for the incompletion. Now, I love that for multiple reasons. First of all, Isaiah Likely getting open on, on Marlon Humphrey. Not, not an easy task, so good for him for doing that. Secondly, Marlon Humphrey not giving up on the play. Punching the ball out, I think we're going to see Marlon Humphrey get back to that. Really punching the ball out, causing fumbles, causing in incompletions. So, the one-on-one -on -one drills today sounded really competitive, really energetic today. It sounded like it was a lot of stuff that got done. And the last one-on-one -on -one that I'm going to talk about is that uh, Jalen Moore got over top of Pepe Williams. And made, I think they said, like a 40-yard touchdown. All right. Uh, Jalen Moore is another guy. 
this this wide receiver position, when you get past wide receiver three, is wide open. Uh, most people expect the Ravens only to carry five receivers. So there are a lot of guys fighting for two spots. So those guys are going to have to keep doing this in practice and showing that they're good because those wide receiver spots are going to snatch up quick. Another guy that had a good day was Makai Polk. I didn't even get to really mention him in the offensive section, but he had a good day as well, making multiple catches all over the field and just being active. I mean, in the uh, Titans game, he kind of went under the radar because Shamar Bridges had such an explosive game. But, but Makai Polk had eight targets, six catches, 43 yards. That's a good game, man. It's a really good game. So the Ravens had an energetic practice. Rashad Bickham was the star of the show, uh, showing that wide receiver one caliber, showing that capability, showing that if you put him one-on-one with somebody, he's going to beat that guy that's in front of him. And uh, that's good, man. The Ravens are going to go on uh, to practice, I think, coming back on Monday. And uh, they'll go from there, man. Uh, we'll, I'll have an update for you then. It's your boy Gabriel, just on the Fan TV. I'm out.